welcome back all of you since last two or three classes you have been trying to understand some of the basic concepts of spin physics and in the last last class i was telling you about normal precision and in that i said one of the important concept is the magnetic field will will exert a torque inducing motion in the magnetic moment torque induces magnetic moment a torque induces motion will be there in the magnetic moment this causes spin to precess i said there are two forces acting on it one is the applied magnetic field wants the spins to align along its direction and of course there is a restricted orientation is there as a consequence there is a torque which is exerted the magnetic field will exert a torque inducing motion in the magnetic moment so millions of such spins will be there not one or two they will be rotating depending on because there are spin off nuclei two possible orientations like this and like this which we also understood we we knew the direction of quantization you could calculate the angle theta in one of the earlier classes so millions of such nuclear spins will be there which is in the sample they all undergo precision simultaneously at the same frequency so the spins which are oriented in the direction of the field will start rotating like this and that which orients in the direction opposite to the field all the spins rotate like this in a cone it, 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 they make a cone around the magnetic field okay and of course this is for the alpha component and this for the beta component and this precision i said is a larmer precision it is a larmer precision now the question is what is its precision frequency they are rotating they are precising i understand the nuclear magnetic moments are precising around the magnetic field but what is this larmer precision frequency of course it depends on the strength of the magnetic field higher the magnetic field higher the precision frequency larmer precision frequency increases linearly with the magnetic field b not external magnetic field and now as i said in the current day we have varieties of spectrometers of various frequencies up to even 1.2 gigahertz which is going to come to the market soon or at least 1 gigahertz and 1.0 gigahertz i know so as a consequence the if i say the spectrometer's frequency is 1 gigahertz or 1.2 gigahertz that is the precision frequency imagine the magnetic moments will be precising at such a high speed hertz per hertz means cycles per second in one second it will rotate in one second it has to rotate 1.2 gigahertz that is 1.2 to 10 to the power of 9 imagine that is the precision frequency the spins will be rotating so fast and it linearly varies with the magnetic field of course again i said because its precision frequency corresponds to resonating frequency of the spectrometer of the nuclear spins taking earlier i showed you an example where the spectrometer numbers you know and the magnet what you see corresponds to resonating frequency of protons like 300 megahertz 400 megahertz 500 megahertz magnets i showed so if i say i have a spectrometer at 1.2 gigahertz that means my precision frequency is 1.2 gigahertz this again tells me nmr is in the radio frequency region of the electromagnetic spectrum now what is the energy involved look at this table where varieties of spectroscopy techniques in the are in the electromagnetic spectrum varieties of frequency ranges have been given and of course wavelength and frequencies have been classified which all all of you know all these things and energy is another thing which is important energy of interaction if you look carefully radio frequency comes at the bottom of this table see the energy which is highest is cosmic rays gamma rays for example s x ray energy in kilojoules per mole if you take it it is 1.2 into 10 to the power of 4 to 1.2 into 10 to the power of 6 very large large amount of energy 
if you come to radio frequency region energy is very small of the order of 10 power of minus 3 to 10 power minus 7 very very low energy region nmr spectroscopy falls in the very low energy region very very low energy because so that means the interaction energy of the nuclear magnetic moments with the external magnetic field is very weak the weak interaction energy is really the strength of nmr you understand the reason is you can you can monitor even the minute perturbation of the set of the nucleus as we go ahead when we discuss more about chemical shapes and uh, couplings we understand the electronic charge distribution at the site of the nucleus if there is a minute change because of the substitution you will see the effect of it so the weak interaction is really the strength of nmr we can monitor many interactions at the site of the nucleus so this is one of the important concepts next i was telling you about gyromagnetic ratio this gyromagnetic ratio has a sign let us say we have a magnetic moment mu and angular momentum p if both mu and p have same signs then gamma is positive if mu and p have opposite signs then gamma is negative okay so this is a look at this figure this is a magnetic moment okay now both spin and this thing both are in the same direction they are in the opposite direction this is p and mu this is when the when both of them have the same signs you have gamma greater than zero in this case you have gamma less than zero <laughs> what is the importance of this gamma so what if it is positive or, ne or negative how does it matter for us it has tremendous implications especially when you are measuring the couplings you will know what is the sign of the coupling which is very important or when you are me measuring what is called residual dipolar couplings or if you want to do some detect forbidden transitions involving nuclei with negative magnetic moment like nitrogen 15 the sign of precision is very very important okay so what happens is the nuclei there are many examples of the nuclei like nitrogen 15 silicon 29 tin 119 all these nuclei have negative gyromagnetic ratio the reason you see what is going to happen now is depending upon the sign of gamma the sense of precision the larmer precision of the spins in the magnetic field is different look at this for gamma greater than zero the spins are rotating like this it is shown as trackwise rotation whereas for gamma less than zero you see it is rotating anti-clockwise so it is rotating in the opposite direction for example for nitrogen 15 spins will always rotate in the opposite direction compared to proton and carbon like that which have positive gamma so this you have to understand this because this concept will be very useful in designing some for example double quantum or triple quantum forbidden transitions which you want to detect multiple quantum transitions involving heteronuclear proton and nitrogen carbon or nitrogen like that then sense of precision will decide the quantum okay that is very important next okay we have understood something in quantum mechanics spin physics classically also we got the picture we know it's a larmer precision the larmer precision we increases linearly with the magnetic field we also understood the sense of precision depending upon the sign of gyro magnetic ratio it is fine now all these things fine there is a difference in the energy everything but we need to detect the signal you see how do you detect the signal the detection of the signal is nothing but the detection of population difference between two energy levels okay remember in the earlier class i said there is a possibility of that more spins aligned in the direction magnet parallel to the magnetic field than opposing it that is the lowest energy option i said so now we have to find out 
how many spins are in this direction how many spins are in this direction that difference is what you are going to see you see the problem you see the uh, see problem now you are nmr signal is nothing but the difference in the spin population between two energy states now the question is how these populations are distributed i know okay i will detect the population difference between two energy states but the next question is how do i know what is the distribution of spin population i have to understand that is governed by what is called boltzmann equation see population difference between energy state is governed by boltzmann equation okay so what is this boltzmann ratio which defines the population ratio between two energy states this is simply given by this expression n alpha by n beta is equal to e to the power of difference energy difference between beta and alpha states or kb into t k is the boltzmann constant t is the temperature but don't get confused in some books it is written as e to the power of minus e beta minus e alpha depending upon which one is your upper state and which is your lower state normally it is at n of upper state over n of lower state n beta or n alpha <coughs> if i take the ratio in the opposite way n beta or n alpha then it is going to be e to the power of minus e beta minus e, e alpha or k beta kb into t or in other words in simple form the ratio of the population is given by e to the power of minus e to the power of delta e by kt or minus delta e by kt in this example the energy level the way i have drawn for me my lower state is alpha upper state is beta so in the conventional way it will be it will be opposite so i have written like this no problem that is why there is no sign but doesn't matter interpretation is same the population difference won't change whether you take this way or that way okay how do you calculate depends upon this term and n alpha and n beta are the population of states alpha and beta i said delta e is the energy fine what is delta e how do you know delta e delta e is nothing but gamma h into b naught over 2 pi we already found out you know what is in the way while we were trying to get the resonating frequency we understood what is delta e delta e, e is given is given by gamma into h over b naught i mean it is gamma h cross h cross is written as h over 2 pi it's a planck's constant all right so i know delta e i can calculate delta e because i know gamma i know h i know 2 pi i know b naught b naught is my magnetic field which it should be expressed in tesla i know what is kb boltzmann constant it is a boltzmann constant this value is also well known temperature must be expressed in kelvin i know what is t all the parameters i know so i only thing is b naught is in my control the magnetic field strength is in my control i can vary the magnetic field to any value i want and calculate what is it energy separation what is delta e difference in the energy okay let us try to do that now if i understand if i try to do that and find out the spin populations it will be like this there will be more spins in this parallel orientation than anti parallel orientation you see that there is small difference i am showing you this is the delta e difference and this is plus alpha state i'm sorry alpha state plus half beta state minus half okay are parallel or anti parallel orientations and i calculate the delta e fine now boltzmann population tells me there are more spins aligned in the direction of the field than opposing it that is the definition of boltzmann boltzmann population dist distribution tells me that okay let us find out so what are the factors that governs then if you look at this equation what are the factors which governs population ratio one is energy separation because it is a numerator larger the energy separation this population ratio becomes larger you understand 
When does energy separation becomes larger? It, linear, it is linearly proportional to magnetic field. So when the magnetic field keeps on increasing, energy separation becomes larger and larger. That's what we saw. Larger the energy separation, then according to this equation, there is a greater the population ratio. The population ratio becomes more and more. That's one point. What is the second possibility to increase the populations? It is also governed by T, temperature. Temperature is in the denominator. I can vary the T, I can make, take it to infinity or make it zero. Doesn't matter, I vary the T the way I want. Let us see what happens. If this reduces, this keeps on increasing. So I can control this, I can control this. So both are in my hands. So population difference or population ratio is governed by two important factors. One is the magnetic field, other is the temperature. These two factors govern the population difference. Now for detecting NMR signal, there must be population difference. If there is no population difference, no NMR, no signal, okay, you can come across a situation like that. Sometimes it so happens, you may come across a situation where there is no population difference at all. But not in the natural situation. You can create artificial situation by equating spin population of both the states by some way. Experimentally, we can do. I'll tell you how later. That is called a saturation state. You go to a saturation state where there is no population difference at all. That means you will not see signal. So, important factor is you must have greater the population ratio or the population difference between alpha and beta states, larger the NMR signal, the sensitivity is higher, you will detect better signal. So we can play with these two parameters now. Now how we can play with these parameters, how we can increase the intensity, let us see. Okay. First, let us see what is the real population difference between two energy states if you take the population ratio. Not difference, I am talking population ratio. Okay. So now, delta E I said, gamma into this, uh, I wrote H, H, Planck's constant here, and B naught, whole 2 pi. Okay, B naught is magnetic field, which I have taken in Tesla, 14 Tesla, and 2 pi. Simply it is a number, don't have to worry, every, all the units are properly written here. Okay. Simply plug in these values into the calculator and find out what is delta E. We find out what is delta E. It turns out to be of this order, 10 to the power of minus 25 joules. That is the energy difference. Okay. Now we know delta E. I know KB. Put it into Boltzmann population ratio equation. N alpha by N beta is equal to E to the power of delta E by KT. Put it there. Now I know KB. I know temperature. If I put this into that equation, the population ratio turns out to be 0 0.999904. You understand? The population ratio is 0 0.999904. What does it mean? That means the energy number of populations but in the both the energy states is more or less same, almost equal. Is it not? It is close to one. Almost, I would say it's one. Very small difference in the six decimal place. So it's very small value. So the population difference is negligibly small. Okay? We can even work out the number. Okay, at room temperature, let me take the example. Two million populations I will take. It, it is much more. You have to go in the Avogadro number very high in uh, this thing. But I will take for understanding purpose. Let us say there are 2 million nuclear spins at in a molecule and my magnetic field is 14 Tesla. And my temperature is thermal equilibrium. At, that means room temperature. You understand? These are the conditions. I know magnetic field. I know temperature. And I 
take the example of 2 million populations and I want to calculate the ratio. Okay, I will do that. If I do that, it turns out that population ratio is this much. That's already we worked out. So how many spins are there in the upper energy state? How many are there in the lower energy state? You can find out. If you find out, of course, I made a rough calculation. I didn't go to get the ratio, taking million number and everything. Approximately, I made a calculation. And it, you find out what is the number of spins in the upper energy state, what is the number of spins in the lower energy state, and find out the difference. It approximately matches. I mean, up to third or fourth decimal place, I managed it. And then I, of course, I, if I take large, a big calculator, I can work out. I rough, roughly, mental calculation I did, and this is what the numbers I got. But don't worry, but it won't be very much different. All right. If you want, you can find out. You know, n alpha by n beta is this ratio. If now total number is 1 million, it is simple primary school mathematics, you can work, work out. Okay. Now, at thermal equilibrium, the spin population of both the energy states are nearly the same. That's what it says. And very little difference in populations. What does it mean? You know, 2 million. The difference in the population is less than 100, about 95 or 96. That means, imagine, if I have to take large number of spins in for the taking into account, the, calculate all the spins available in a given sample, find out the population ratio, you hardly detect only a few hundreds. The difference is so small. And that is what you have to detect. So that means NMR is highly insensitive technique. The population difference is so small, if you want to detect the NMR signal, it's very difficult for you because it's highly insensitive technique. Then, then you may ask me a question, what do I do then? How do I use NMR? Don't worry, I'll show you. There are men, many, many ways of increasing the sensitivity. Mind you, that small population difference you say is more than sufficient. If we, we can get that signal, detect that signal, and then do all our experiments, whatever you want. That though the population difference is negligibly small, it is still, still detectable. Of course, there are ways to increase the sensitivity. We can do that. Number of ways are there to enhance the sensitivity. Okay. I can make the signal intensity more and more by various things. Look at the Boltzmann equation. Now, this is in my hands. This energy separation becomes larger and larger with magnetic field. So, larger the magnetic field, larger the energy separation. So, I will play with the magnetic field now. What happens if I play with the magnetic field? When the field strength increases, delta A increases. But remember, when I take when I have taken this ratio, when delta A is larger, the population ratio n alpha by n beta increases. Because this is in the numerator. When population ratio increases, the sensitivity increases. Because we detect the difference in populations. That's all it is. So it's simple. What you have to do is keep on increasing the magnetic field maximum possible you can achieve. Then your sensitivity keeps increasing. All right. You may ask me a question. Okay. Let us say from 5 Tesla, 2 Tesla, I will take the magnetic field to 20 Tesla, I will increase 10 times the magnetic field. Will it solve a problem of sensitivity forever? That is the next question. What is the, how much magnetic field you have to increase? If I increase magnetic field by some number, some ratio, or two times, three times, or four times, how much change will be there in the population difference? You calculate. Same way, in the equation which was given to you, just change the magnetic field and calculate. That I took the example of 2 million populations, 2 million spins. When magnetic field is zero, they are all degenerate states. No population difference at all. It is zero. Now, I have, I'll put this in a small magnetic field. Not small, reasonably good, 2.35 Tesla. It's not a small number. In, the, in a magnetic field of 2.35 Tesla, I calculated the population difference. It is only uh, 16. Population ratio is 60, not difference, but I made it as a small number, so it, I called it, I took it as a difference, so that when you subtract these two, you will get 16 is the difference. Okay, 
So uh, population ratio is 16, but I've shown you, showing you here as the difference, not the ratio. So please remember this. This is a small number you can work out. I, I had no time to work out, so I'm giving you this value. Now, I increased the magnetic field from 2.35 to 9.4. Four times I made difference. Population difference become four times more. Difference was 16 here, it became 64. Okay, further increase. Another double it. Now from here, from this place to here, now it is 18 times. Okay. Okay, okay, from here to here, I'm sorry, this is uh, four times. So here to here, eight times. So I have increased the magnetic field eight times. 2.35 Tesla became 18.8 Tesla. But what is the difference of population you are seeing? Only 128. My God, look at the, the difference you are seeing. From 16 spins difference in 2 million, by increasing the magnetic field eight times, you made it only 128. What great thing you have achieved. Just from 16 spin population difference, you took it to 128. But you may say it is a small number. But it is significant. As far as the NMR detection is concerned, this difference is still significant. Remember, I took only example for this thing. But you have taken the N symbol of molecules and so many nuclear spins will be there. If you calculate, that will be still a small number but significant enough to see the difference in the sensitivity okay that's one thing you look at it what happens i keep on changing the magnetic field 7 to 14 the sensitivity goes by 2.3 times by increasing the magnetic field uh, from 14 i go to 21 so it became 5.2 times see remember let us say if the sensitivity goes by two times your experimental time, the instrument time requirement comes down by a factor of four. It means, let us say I have a sample. It takes, let us say, four hours for me to get a reasonably good signal. If I double the sensitivity, then I require only one hour. Imagine the saving of the time. But you have to play with the magnetic field, which is not an easy thing to achieve. Higher the magnetic field. So, when you increase the magnetic field, higher in, uh, achieving a higher and higher magnetic field is technically highly demanding, not easy. But nevertheless, nowadays the technology is so advanced, we can go to 21, even 24 Tesla magnetic fields are available. So, sensitivity can be significantly increased. From here to here, five times sensitivity enhancement. 5.2, oh, take five times. So your experimental time comes down, comes down drastically, okay? And so this spectrum shows you how the sensitivity goes up by change of magnetic field. See, at 400 megahertz, signal to noise ratio is about 600, but here it is about 1,700. Nearly threefold enhancement in the sensitivity just by doubling the magnetic field. See this type of spectrum, what you get here, and what is the type of spectrum you got? just by doubling the magnetic field. It's a significant achievement, okay? So now, this is as when you play with the magnetic field. What happens with the temperature? Remember, temperature term is in the denominator, okay? Let us play with the temperature. When the temperature is lowered, the power of the exponential increases here, because in this expression, I have taken the opposite way. So the power of the exponential increases drastically, because this comes down. When it increases drastically, means what happens? At low, very, very low temperature, the population ratio will get enhanced. The ratio of these two becomes significantly larger. Understand? So you take this for large number, multiply by this. So in the population of alpha states is significantly large, several orders of magnitude multiplied by population of the beta states. That's what it says. So, according to this equation, if I go to very, very low temperature, there is a possibility that I can take, not possibility, there is. Definitely, I can increase the population in the low energy state because this number becomes significantly larger. 
and multiply by this spins in the higher register so this will become quite large population ratio will definitely increase so that means the sensitivity will go up now you may ask me a question what happens i raise the temperature infinitely instead of lowering i keep on increasing the temperature very high now put this value keep keep putting more higher and higher value for temperature here and temperature let us assume it is too large a value close to infinity then because this is in the bottom denominator then what will happen this becomes zero the exponential power becomes zero when this indices become zero then it is e to the power of zero is one what does it mean n alpha will be equal to n beta that is when the temperature keeps on increasing when it become very high temperature your spin population of both the states are equal this situation is called saturation that means there is no population difference at all all this both the energy states have equal population if you go to very very high temperature that is the situation where no signal will be seen i hope you all you all you are all getting the points now how to enhance the sensitivity i have already told you play with the magnetic field we calculate the population ratio when we double the magnetic field take it to four times we calculate the number though the number appears small but in the realistic spectrum we saw it is nearly three fold rise in the sensitivity by doubling the magnetic field at the same time the temperature is lower we know that at if go to very very low temperature the, the population in the lower energy state becomes significantly high okay and as a consequence the sensitivity also of course depends upon gamma another term in addition to delta delta e and temperature sensitivity also depends upon gamma it is given by this equation okay larger the magnetic field larger the energy and higher the sensitivity okay larger the magnetic field larger the energy and higher the sensitivity now what happens with gamma higher the gamma higher the sensitivity how i'll tell you now okay so we okay we'll come back and uh, discuss more about sensitivity enhancement or dependence of the sensitivity on gamma maybe in the next class we'll discuss but i hope you are all with me in, the, in this class i think i have not lost any of you i am trying to drag my level best to, to take all of you with me in this class i discussed about starting from the larmor precision frequency we calculated lot of things we found out the sensitivity issue it depends upon delta e and also t and we have worked out population ratio using the boltzmann equation and we knew how to play with the magnetic field how to play with the temperature to enhance the sensitivity another important factor is the sensitivity also depends upon gamma what will happen how it depends upon gamma is one thing which we have to understand so we will discuss that in the next class